Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, I've actually already made a demonstration video for this, but this is an assembly video. What this is, is this board is designed to work with your soldering iron uh, so that when you turn this on, uh, 30 minutes after you turn it on, the soldering iron will turn off. And of course, if that happens, you just press the button again and it turns it back on if you don't want to keep using it. Now, I've designed this because I've, desi I've destroyed many tips uh, on my soldering iron for leaving it on overnight. And of course, not only is that bad for the soldering iron, uh, it's bad for your state of mind and it's potentially bad for your house. Um, I've also knocked over, had my cat knock over my soldering iron on many occasions. Uh, in every case, I heard it, luckily. So, this is designed specifically to turn your soldering iron off automatically for you. And if after a while you, uh, you want to turn off your uh, soldering iron on your own, you can press the, uh, the cell button to turn it off. Anyway, sorry for the odd lighting in here. It's a, I've got my window right behind me, but let me just introduce you to the parts. You've got a custom PCB, 7805 5-volt regulator two 10k ohm resistors, two 1N4001 diodes, three 2-pin terminal blocks, a 470 ohm resistor, a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, two 2N2222 NPN transistors, two um, monetary push buttons, uh, a 3 millimeter red LED, two 100 uh, microfarad capa uh, electrolytic capacitors, two 5-volt relays, a program microcontroller, and an 8-pin socket. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to show you how to place the resistors and the capacitors. You've got three resistors, the 210K and the one 470 ohm. Uh, it's actually labeled on the board. Uh, R2 is 10K, R1 is 470R for 470 ohm, and your second 10K ohm resistor is R4 right here. Now, your 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, it's not polarized, both leads are the same size, it doesn't matter which, place, which way you place it. Place it in the C1 slot right here with 0.1U for 0.1 micro, and your two electrolytics, your two 100 microfarad electrolytics go in the C3 and the C2 slots. Now, on both of them, there is a plus sign, uh, in this case on the left, and on the top here, that is for your the, the positive lead of the electrolytic. Don't place it in backwards. Now your electrolytics have a long lead and a short lead. Long lead is positive, short lead is negative. Make sure you place your 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 uh, long lead in the positive side, and and your short lead in the side without the negative sy symbol. Uh, so positive, long lead, positive, long lead. And so once you solder those into place, we will do our uh, our transistors and our regulator. Now, I made a mistake. There are three 10K ohm resistors and one 470 ohm resistor that come with this kit. Four resistors total. R1, 470 ohm, listed on the board. Uh, R2, R3, and R4 are 10K ohm. So, uh, you should get three 10K ohm resistors, not two. Uh, so, now we're going to actually do the, our diodes and our transistor and our regulator. The regulator goes right here in the, in the IC2 slot, labeled IC27805. The back of the regulator is white, or whitish, grayish, and that's and the top of the footprint is grayish. Uh, so make sure that the black is facing the front, and that the the ground, the, the grayish white, is facing the back. So in this orientation, the two transistors go into the T1 and T2 slots, labeled T1 2N2222, T2 2N2222, and there is a curved side of the footprint and a flat side. The transistors have a flat side that have writing on it and a curved side. From a bird's eye view, make sure that the curved side of the transistor faces the curved side on the footprint and the flat side with the writing on it facing the flat faces the flat side. If you turn it around, your circuit will not work properly. Your diodes. Uh, let's just talk about the 1N4001 diodes. They go in the D4 and the D3 slots. Now, um, there is, you can't see it from here probably, but there's a white side of the diode and there's a black side. The white side of the diode is actually on the footprint. In both cases, it's facing down, the, the bottom side. Now make sure that you line up the, uh, line up those, the white area of the diode with, uh, the white area on the, uh, footprint. If you turn those around, your relays will not turn on and you will actually, uh, short your circuit. Very, very important you look at the orientation there. 
Now your LED, your single 3mm LED is a short lead and a long lead. And it is placed in the LED 1 slot. Now the negative goes on the right side here. And the positive goes on the left. So long lead goes on the left, short lead goes in the right from this perspective. Solder those all into place and next we'll do our buttons and our terminal blocks. The two buttons are placed in the start and sell footprints right here at the bottom. They only fit in one way and they should, they should pop in with relative ease. Uh, make sure that they're flush with the board when you solder them. Solder all four sides of each button. The terminal blocks, there are three of them. Make sure that the terminal sides are facing outwards. There's a plastic side and there's a terminal side. It's a terminal side facing out for all three. If you Turn them around in the case of the power terminal block, it'll be facing the capacitor. You're not going to be able to wire in your 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 DC power source. Um, you're going so going to if you if you if you turn the soldering uh, iron terminal blocks the other way, they'll be facing the relays. So make sure that the terminals are facing outwards. Good strong solder joints, guys. Once we do that, we'll put in the socket, our uh, programmed microcontroller, and our two relays. Last step, your socket has a notch on the left hand side. The footprint labeled PIC10 uh, has a notch on the left hand side. Make sure that when you place your socket in, that you're, you're, from a bird's eye view, the notches match up. Now the reason for this is because there's also a notch on the left hand side of the microcontroller. So if you power it up and you've got the microcontroller in the wrong orientation, you will fry your microcontroller. So make sure that your notches match and are facing the left hand side from this perspective. Now your relays, uh, they have three pins on one side, two on the other. And they go into the K1 and K2 slots. Now, they really only fit in one way. They pop right in. Make sure that you have a healthy dose of solder on each one that it flows nicely. Um, one thing to mention about the socket, make sure that there are no shorts. They're, the pins are close beside each other, so take care in soldering. Once you have this all soldered, place the microcontroller in the slot and we'll power it up. This device requires 9 volts to operate. A 9 volt 1 amp wall transformer uh, will do just fine. Uh, I've placed 9 volts here. Now the, ni the neat thing about the circuit is, and if you've seen the demonstration video you'll already uh, rem you might remember this, uh, as soon as you press the start button what it does is applies power to the circuit. Uh, when, and uh, basically it acts as a switch to power, to power it on temporarily and then uh, the first relay takes over for power and once you turn the device off uh, absolutely no power will be supplied to the circuit including the the digital circuitry this will consume zero amps um, so if I press start it connects this relay takes over for applying power to the circuit then this, uh, it also powers on this relay, which basically connects here to here. So if I connect my, if I have a hot wire, if I have an extension cord, I open it up, I cut the black wire, I put one end here, one end here. Uh, as long as this relay is on, it will, uh, it will basically connect those two wires back together again. And when it turns off, uh, it will, it will disapply. Uh, or disengage the these two terminal blocks so it will be severed so your, your uh, soldering iron will be turned off. I do have this in the demonstration video. So anyway, let me press start. Let me power it on first, sorry. LED blinks three times and what happens is after 30 minutes that LED will blink three more times and both relays will be turned off completely disengaging power from the soldering iron and from the digital circuitry. So, um, if I press start again, or if I press sell, I can turn it off anytime by pressing sell, S-E-L, and you hear both relays click off. Uh, now, on the bottom of the circuit, you'll see very, very thick traces. That is so that you can power your 30 watt or, or less soldering iron properly uh, without burning any traces. So, again, I press start. After 30 minutes, these relays will turn off automatically. So you can leave the room. You can forget about your soldering iron. You can mount it in a box. There are four uh, four mounting holes. And again, after you turn it on, I can simply press SEL to stop it. And then you can leave the room and you can go have a cup of tea. 
Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If uh, you want to see a full demonstration, I actually use my soldering iron and an extension cord with this unit. It would be best to mount it in the project box. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. It should be available at engineeringshop.com and electroniclessons.com very soon. Uh, electroniclessons.com is a rebate store. Take care, guys.